Have you been thinking about going on a repositioning cruise and thought, mine is so cheap, what's the catch? I had my doubts too, and you know what? I was wrong. In this video, I'm gonna give you some pros and cons of a repositioning cruise, along with a few tips and tricks that you can use on your next cruise. And you know what? If you've been on a repositioning cruise, leave your comments below to help out everybody that's watching this video. Cruise ships follow the sun, making a seasonal dance around the globe. They're moving from home port to home port. So for example, in the summer, cruise ships are in Alaska. Well, you don't want to be in Alaska in the winter. So they make their way to LA or directly to Hawaii, and then they make their way on to New Zealand and Australia for their summer months. Or you might go from Fort Lauderdale to Lisbon and Barcelona for the summer in Europe. On repositioning cruises, remember, they're one way. It's here to fly home. It really helps out if you live near one of the ports, the port that it leaves from or that it comes back from, because now you only have to pay for a one-way flight. In 2023, Celebrity Cruise offered a 17-day cruise from Hawaii, stopping along the way in Tahiti, New Zealand, and ending up in Australia. It's like $1,500 down from $4,300. That is an incredible saving. The company offered another cruise. It was a 12-day. This one was going from Port Lauderdale over to Lisbon, Portugal. It was $949, down from a little bit over $3,000. So you can see repositioning cruises can be such a great way to save some money. Last October, we took a repositioning cruise. This time it was going from the Alaska area, Vancouver, down to LA. It only had one stop. It stopped in Victoria, Canada for a morning. This year, we're going on another repositioning cruise in May. This time, the cruise line is celebrity and it's going from LA and to make it more interesting they have offered more stops so you stop in Catalina you stop in San Francisco you stop in Victoria for longer ending up in Vancouver so that's one way the cruise lines kind of entice people they don't just scoot off to the destination as quickly as possible they add a few extra stops along the way on that cruise we got an Ocean View Prime cabin for $356 per person U.S., down from $1125 per person U.S. So you can see it's a great savings going on a repositioning cruise. Another great benefit of going on repositioning cruises is they do want you to book these cruises. So they need to stop in places you'd be interested in going. Sometimes there's places you wouldn't normally go. So, for example, the Suez Canal, you might go through that, or you might go down the Ivory Coast in Africa, which is not part of a normal itinerary. Trans-Pacific cruises, they don't happen year round. They happen during repositioning. So if you want to get from LA to Australia in a nice slow way to get there, a nice calm way to get there without the jolts of time change with the jet lag, then a cruise is really nice. You can't normally do that. It's only those two times a year going to and from with the seasonal changes. Even though it's a repositioning cruise, it has all the benefits of regular cruising. You unpack once. You don't have to haunt around for what to eat. You have your accommodations. And then add to all that, the entertainment and the other things that the cruise offers. It's great. It's so much fun. Here are some tips. Speed round style. Rapid fire tips. You want to make sure to pick the right ship, the right cruise line. If you or somebody who likes a party every night, don't go on a celebrity or a princess cruise. Go on a Royal Caribbean. Next, choose a cabin that is near the center of the ship on the lower deck, especially if you get seasick. Since you are out in the middle of the ocean, prone to more rocking ground, you want to resist the temptation to book too early. So these crews, we like originally when we first looked at the ship that we're going on for our repositioning, it was $666 for an inside cabin. And we ended up getting it for $356 for a prime ocean view. So, wait. You want to think twice if this is your first time cruising. If you're a first time cruiser, you could go on a quick one like we are, just a seven day, but to do a 27 day cross Pacific, uh, I may not make that my first cruise. You want to buy travel insurance. The travel insurance through a cruise company 
because you want to make sure you're covered, particularly for medical, any kind of medical re emergency. If you're out in the ocean, you want to pay to get you back to some place, you know, if they have to air back you out. That could cost you thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. You do want to fly in a day early. You want to bring a book. There are more sea days when you are on these ships. So you want to have something to do. Bring a book, bring some games. You might think about looking at traditional dining where you have more people at your table, not just you and your whoever you came with. I might meet some people. They're super interesting. Lots of them have been on lots of these cruises, so you can hear all their tips and tricks. And then find like uh, when you're at dinner with all those people, you might not want to get dessert every night. Before I fill you in with some more pros and a few cons, be sure to subscribe to this channel. It really does help people to find this channel, and I really appreciate it. Repositioning cruises often are less crowded. Not as many people go on Trans-Pacific, Transatlantic cruises, or even the repositioning cruise we did from Vancouver to LA. But that doesn't mean you might think, well, are they going to cut this number of people working on the ship to save some money during those repositionings? No. People that work on the ship, they sign on for a six-month contract. So they have just as much service with less people, which may mean that you might feel like you get a little bit better service. Something to think about is what you enjoy. So if you are more laid back and like to have a few days that are not back-to-back -back itinerary driven, that maybe a normal cruise would be, then a repositioning might be for you. Now, if you know that would drive you crazy to be out at sea for four to five days, you may not think a repositioning cruise is all that great. You might be thinking, Christy, am I going to get bored on the ship? I never got bored. There was always a game show to go to, some trivia. The cruise staff really wanted to keep people active and engaged. There were classes. We didn't even get to do everything we wanted to do. There was so much to do. And on these longer cruises, they often have like ballroom dancing classes. They have water painting. They have journaling classes, like all these things that you wouldn't even think about just to keep you engaged and keep you busy. You might also wonder, so do they still have the same entertainment shows, things like that? Yeah, they still do. All those people are hired for six months. So they're doing the shows, having the entertainment. And sometimes they have some special things, special lectures, so when we did our repositioning, they called it the Hollywood Insider. And they had stars from the Dallas TV show. So there was Linda Gray, Christopher Atkins, Cherie Wilson. So it was kind of a neat addition that you might not, well, you wouldn't otherwise have. But you might wonder who was on the cruise. Well, there's a lot of retirees and seasoned travelers, which worked out great for us because they were filled with stories and tips and tricks because they've been on so many cruises. It's time for the con speed round. There are a few more cons. More deed at sea means more time to spend money in the gambling and bingo, shopping. So you want to kind of think about that when you go on a cruise. You want to think, okay, I'm going to budget so that you don't overdue. Next, if you have certain medical conditions that you cannot be near land for a long time, maybe a repositioning cruise is not for you. This one's on you and on me, gaining weight. This is on all cruises, but if you're on a 27-day cruise where you can't get dessert every night, I'd be careful. Just because a cruise is 27 days, that doesn't mean you have to go all 27 days. For example, the cruise that we went on, Went from Vancouver to LA, on to Hawaii, then on to Australia, New Zealand, things like that. You could have just gone to Hawaii and hopped on the ship and made your way over to Australia that way. So they have different segments that you can do when you do a repositioning cruise. You don't have to do the whole thing. Have you been on a repositioning cruise? Are you thinking about one? Leave a comment below, especially if you have a few tips and tricks for our viewers. Trying to decide which cruise or cruise line to go on next? Check out this video where we review the Majestic Princess. Happy sailing!